Godzilla is an absolute f toss bag. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Don't forget to like, share and please subscribe because 89% of people who watch my videos are unsubscribed. Please help me grow the channel. I'm trying to get to a 1000 subscribers. Uh, might even start doing some live streams. Just been to see Godzilla. I, I, I'm lost for words. I'm absolutely lost. I don't even know. I don't even know what to say about the movie. It's absolutely fucking astounding, <clears throat> and it's it's such a shame. It, it it's it's got me. I can't even talk about it. So many emotions running through me at the minute. I'm I'm fucking pissed off at the fact that Hollywood is destroying itself. With a lot of the, the politics that they're injecting into the movies nowadays. I think some of you know what I'm talking about. Um, just walk bullshit. Just every movie, every superhero movie. Let's make every superhero gay. Every superhero has to be a, a woman. Every, every, every villain has to be a white man. Every character has to be like race swapped and gender swapped. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. And then along comes a Japanese guy called Takashi Yamazaki. With a film that's just absolutely blown Hollywood apart, it's it's so successful in the US that they had to extend its its run in the cinema, um, and there's actually talk of they're going to re-release it, believe it or not, they're going to re-release it in in January on January the twelfth of next year. It's going to get re-released in a black and white format. If anybody's into that kind of real cinematography, old style. Um, I could talk all day about this film. Uh, I don't really know what to say. I'll get into a little. I'll try not to spoil it too much. I want you all to go and see this movie and support this movie. Yes, it's Japanese. Yes, there are a lot of characters. Every single character in this movie is astounding. Like, there's no wasted dialogue. There's no filler dialogue. Everything has a purpose. You feel. You feel real empathy for the characters. You get to know them and you kind of get to like them. There's not one character that you don't like in this movie. I'll go out on a limb and say that. And fucking Godzilla's an absolute fucking lunatic. I don't know who pissed on his chips or, or somebody must have spilt his pint, but he's fucking furious for some reason. He must have had some really poor customer service because he's fucking awful. Um, I, I kind of rooted for him towards the end, I really did. I, I thought he was fucking amazing, but he absolutely fucking destroys. Like, see you later, Japan, you fucked. <laughs> There's a giant iguana, an amphibious iguana coming, and he's fucking seriously pissed off. And once he gets on, oh god, I can't even describe. Once he once he gets going, he just like he's relentless. He doesn't give a fuck. He's munching away at people, and just stomping on crowds and fucking throwing trains and ships and fucking smashing buildings to pieces. He's an absolute fucking mental case. He should be locked up. He, sh he sh really should be locked up for the shit he pulls. Like, at the Japan, I don't know how you put up with sh shit like that. He's just... <laughs> He's like, oh, man. And I swear to God, when he uses his, his heat ray breath, fucking laser beam mouth gun, fucking hell. It like it, it, he blasts the ship in a fucking mushroom cloud appears. I'm trying not to be too spoilery with this this review. I don't normally do reviews, but I'm I just I'm like a fucking five year old who's just been to see Star Wars. Oh, just a breath of fresh air. None of your bullshit. None of your woke bullshit politics. Trying to push agendas and fucking just trying to indoctrinate it. Your audience, just give your audience a story, smash everything to fucking pieces, have a little bit of right romance, like an unrequited romance, which is what you get in this movie. I'm going to start off and kind of go through what the story's about. So you've got this 
it's, oh, look, it says here, this is The Guardian, Godzilla Minus One review, a thunderously entertaining prequel. I'll show you what it says at the beginning of this, this review. It says, a failed kamikaze pilot, one furious radioactive lizard, and a Japan devastated by war. Uh, collide in Takashi Yamazaki's unashamedly redemptive action thriller and that's what it's about the whole film's kind of um, character called Koichi Shikishima and he's looking for just redemption he's just uh, he's, it's so relatable it's it's horrible it starts out he's a kamikaze pilot and he's decides to not be a kamikaze pilot and decides to uh, pull his plane over land on this island called Odo Island um, it's 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 basically full of mechanics um, they repair the Japanese Air Force they repair the planes and, and whatnot so he lands he says there's something wrong with the plane I couldn't get it to do whatever it's supposed to do and the, the mechanics have a look at it and they the realize soon realize that there's there's no faults on this airplane so this other like the head mechanic uh, called Tachibano he kind of pulls up he says there's nothing wrong with the plane so what does that mean and Koichi gets a little bit shirty he's like what are you implying so the kind of he gets branded as is within the first five or ten minutes he's branded as a coward and he knows it and he feels it and he feels the shame in that because it's a very honorable society it's it's all about honor and and tradition you know the, the, japan with just the way this sort of military precision um punctuality just everything is regimental and i quite like that go back to the days of the samurai everything was honor so he's bottled it and then the fucking godzilla jumps out of the sea like rah you bastards um i've got you but this one's it's not as big as normal godzilla it, it's kind of in his, his sort of a teenager he's like baby groot uh, and I think what happens is when when the the American forces drop I mean, it was horrific but the, the, the drop the bombs uh, on Hiroshima etc I think that's what the radiation caused Godzilla to grow because he does grow and fuck me does he grow he's like bigger than the city height wise <laughs> but he comes in he stomps about he, he basically he starts smashing the, the, this little uh, this little station on the island. Tachibano says to Koichi, the failed kamikaze pilot, says, get in your plane. You can use your 20 millimeter cannons and try and take them down. So he jumps in the plane and again, his hands start shaking. Oh dear. Uh, and he's looking at Godzilla and he fails again. He can't pull the trigger. He's terrified of this giant lizard. Subsequently, all the... the um, all the men on stationed on that island get just get stomped and, and oh man he goes at them he fucking he, he just like grabs them with his teeth he doesn't eat them he fucking throws them he grabs them with his teeth and then just throws them in the sea it's fucking horrible there was kids in the cinema with us i don't know what the parents were thinking or what the kids were thinking they're probably crawling under the seat um, I, I was scooching down in my seat thinking, fucking, what am I watching here? It's, it's like an um, amped up version of Jurassic Park. Horrible. Throws them all over. There's an explosion. Koichi gets thrown into the sort of onto the beach. Wakes up. Everyone's dead. Tachibano's pulling the bodies, putting the bodies in, in bags and, and, and sort of sort, sorting the bodies out. Horrible. Koichi then he returns home. I think, I think the bomb's being dropped. The wall's over. He tries to return home. Somebody recognizes him and says, Why are you here? You're a kamikaze pilot. What are you doing here? And she, she slaps him in the face, etc. So he's walking through this market. I think he's looking for his parents' house. Then he, he, he hears a commotion. And the other main character, Noriko, appears. She, she's being chased. This woman's basically she's being chased through the marketplace by what, probably the authorities or the police or some disgruntled marketer. 
market stall holders running after her. She must. She looks like she's stolen something. She actually gives this. She hands this bundle, pushes this bundle onto Koichi, and runs off. And he's taken by surprise. I think, what the fucking hell is she doing? And when he looks down, there's, there's a baby wrapped in a in a in a cloth, uh, and he's thinking, oh fucking hell, <laughs> great. That's all I need. So he hangs around for a bit. He, he eventually bumps into her, and the, the, the cat, he, he, he pretty much vows to, I think it's some kind of redemption he's looking for. He's wanting to save her. He says, look, I'll, I'll take care of you. Come and live with me, I'll take care of you. I'll, I'll, I'll find a job and I'll take care of you. He does find a job. He, he finds a job on, on a boat that's been uh, given the mission of get, get, getting rid of some of the 60,000 mines that the US forces left around the J Japanese coast, uh, like sea mines. So that's when they encounter Godzilla for the first time. He fucking, he turns up big style. Um, I won't spoil it too much, but they actually, they find the flaw in Godzilla in his sort of impenetrable armor they, they actually drop a sea mine off the, the back of the boat that they've collected during the, the, the mission. Godzilla kind of catches it in his mouth and then it detonates. It looks fucking it's horrible. It blows half his face off. And think, oh, fucking hell. He's not infallible. If we can, you know, shoot him in the mouth, he, and it kind of knocks him sideways. But Godzilla fucking regenerates like you wouldn't believe. It's like Doctor Who. <laughs> just like all this electricity and shit. And then his, his face just grows back. He's back to his normal self. He's back to his normal angry as fuck. Like, who's, who's pinched my fucking shoes, uh, spilt my pint and, and fucking nicked my dinner? I'm going to wreck the lot of you because I'm fucking massive. He's an absolute, he's a fucking mental case, I swear to God. So he goes to attack the, the boat uh, and this big warship thing, like frigate cruiser or whatever, starts blasting him. And then uh, he kicks off. I'm not going to spoil it anymore. You need to go and see it. Uh, just, you do see Godzilla. You do see a good portion of Godzilla. And fuck me, when, when you see him, he's, he's not a happy lad. But the bits in between, the acting... The dialogue, the characters, this guy, Koichi, like, he's so relatable, he, he, he's having, like, mental health issues, just burning away in his mind, thinking, how much of a fucking failure am I? And you can tell there's some chemistry between him and Noriko, and he's got this little girl, Akiko, that they're looking after, and you can feel that you kind of sense that he's fallen in love, but he won't commit. It's horrendous. The pair of them, uh, pair of them look at each other like, you, like you do when you're in love with somebody. But because he's such a failure, all he wants to do, I think all he wants to do is what any man wants to do, and that's to be a man. And I don't think he can he feel that he's a hundred percent the man that he actually wants to be because of his past not going through with his mission of being a kamikaze and it's killing him and it kind of ruins this lovely relationship that he's got and he's desperately trying to, to make amends. They eventually, sort of in the third act, they come up with a plan on how to destroy Godzilla and I won't go into that because I need you to just go and see this film. Um, the music, like some of the music is just straight out of like I mean, there's been 40 Godzilla movies since 1954. Um, and I'm sure I've, I've seen a couple of them when I was a kid. I saw a Godzilla movie and there was a, there was Godzilla vs. King Kong back in the 50s and 60s. And I'm sure I've seen it somewhere, like replayed in some cinema or on TV or whatever. And like the music then, it was uh, very reminiscent. But... The whole score is fantastic. The sound, fucking, the sound is just like thunderous. It's unreal. When he uses his heat ray, it's fucking incredible. When he's stomping about, everything's shaking. He stomps on the ground. He doesn't just stomp on the ground. He stomps on the ground and makes like an imprint. The whole ground cracks and comes up. It's just the thought of everything. 
I mean, like 97% of the effects are spot on. There's a couple of little ropey things, but I mean, what was the budget? Hang on, and I'll find out. Give me, give me a little. Uh, the budget was, <laughs> the budget was like 15 million dollars. Fuck off, man. 15 million dollars, and I've just watched one of the best films I've seen in like the last 20 years. And then you get shit like the Marvels that cost over 200 million, and it was a fucking bag of shite. Everything that Disney produces is a bag of shite. Um, prove me wrong, I dare you. <laughs> just since Infinity War, just nah. Endgame was kind of alright, and then everything after that was just fucking shit. And all the TV shows are fucking shit. And if you don't watch the TV shows, you won't have a fucking clue what's going on in the movies now. So that's Disney got you by the balls. But Disney can fucking suck my balls. Because Kathleen Kennedy <laughs> and her ilk and fucking Kevin Feige, they're now going to make the X-Men the X-Women. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so, and, it, and it's made something like... I should have seen somewhere 78 million dollars like on a 15 million budget and it's still going in the cinemas and there's still people going to see it like fuck you hollywood hollywood can shove itself up its own fucking asshole yeah i said it and, I'm, and yeah i'm not sorry uh bring on more films like this and just please go and see this film if you haven't already seen it or you're thinking about going to see it because it won't be around forever yeah it's going to come out on digital and blu-ray and I'm going to buy it in every format possible. Uh, I might even get the laser disc and the VHS copy. Probably come out on VHS because it's kind of reminiscent of the, the 50s and 60s and 70s. So I'll just uh, just buy the lot. Fuck Hollywood. Um, <laughs> fuck Hollywood. Fuck Disney. Fuck Naughty Dog. And fuck Kathleen Kennedy. Anyway. Um, thanks for watching. If you watched this far, go and see Godzilla. Origato, uh, and I'll see you in the next video. I don't like doing reviews, really, but I couldn't help myself. I don't forget to subscribe. Please help the channel. I really appreciate everyone that's helped me so far. Bye bye now. <laughs>